Hello dear viewers, I've taken no break from my busy streaming schedule because user Darkman237 commented saying Would you be willing to review all the backup options for Unity projects and let us know the best options? Um, reviewing all of them might take an eternity, so <laughs> probably not all of them But I will go over the ones I currently use and what I plan to use going forward because there's going to be some slight changes uh, because I've run out of storage on Git LFS. So, currently the two methods I use are source control and more conventional backups. Conventional backups are something you should be doing all the time, even if you're using source control. I'm speaking from experience here, because one time I messed something up, I was like, oh, okay, I'll just recover from source control, only to find out every single iteration of my source control was somehow corrupted, and that's how I lost all the scene files for above the stars and why we're probably never going to get any updates for that game anymore um still no idea why they were corrupted across all scenes like if i opened them on my old computer they'd run fine but on, my, on any other pc it would say corrupted but anyway that's why we do conventional backups and conventional backups are very easy because all you need to do is copy the assets and the project settings file uh, folders from your project folder you don't need anything else. You can add other stuff, like you could even add the git files, git ignore, git attributes, git, and you could probably add the packages files as well because it's quite lightweight. But all you really need is the projects folder and assets folder. I have maybe one or two others just because I like to keep everything in this folder to keep it organized, but this is all you need. So all you have to do is drag that, and I use WinRAR, you can use whatever, and it's nice to have a little naming convention, so I put the date after in year, month, day, obviously, because I'm not some sort of heathen. And that's it. That's the entire thing. You can, as I said, use a... Shamelessly haven't bought WinRAR. You can use a zip file if you want to, um, but WinRAR's just, I think, better, lower file sizes. And yeah, that's that's how you can back up conventionally. You don't need all these library and logs and all this stuff. They just create needless bloat, and they'll be generated when you open the project anyway. Okay, so that's how you conventionally back up. And you may want to put this backups folder somewhere other than your main drive where you have your actual project. So my project is on my C drive, so my backup project is on my D drive. And you could even do it something like you can have a backups folder in your OneDrive or your Google Drive or wherever you want and that'll be more secure because then it would upload to the cloud. What you want to get into next, and again another thing you should always be doing even if you're doing conventional backups, is source control. Source control is a means of get maintaining versions between each update. So each time you make a change, you commit your changes and I'll give you an example of my actual project. You'll see how each commit I've done, I've got no naming scheme, it's all terrible. If you work in the professional field, you're looking at this with disgust. But it shows what each time I've done something I've committed. So I said, okay, now I added loot orbs. You commit that change, map load changes, character control changes, so I commit those changes. And you can see all the changes as well if you go into the individual files. So to set this up, you need to install Git. You need to install Git LFS as well. You just download Git, you run this Git install. I'll probably do this in a second anyway. I've got it all set up on my PC. And then you want an IDE as well, of some sort, uh, i.e. source tree. Uh, Rider has one inbuilt, but it doesn't really work with submodules very well, so I use source tree. And then you just go create repo, put where it is, and then it makes one for you. First, I'll get into how to actually use Git in case you haven't done it before. So when you make a new project and set it up with um, your on source tree or whatever your ID is, when you say new create project, it'll basically put these files into your project. So I'll make this hidden .git folder, which basically means this is now being tracked in your source control. And you can also add these files, git ignore and git attributes. Git attributes is for use with LFS or large file storage and git ignore is just for use with the repository in general. There are templates for these, so you don't need to worry about this. You just copy, you just download it from here and put it into your folder. And what this does is ignore various files. Cause as I said, you don't want to be including like the builds or the library and all the stuff that you can use later or is just made on its own. Cause otherwise you're going to be 
bulking out your repository needlessly and wasting loads of space. So you put this in the same, just the root folder of your project, wherever the git is, and also git attributes, uh, manages LFS, which is large file storage, as I said. Hey, future Armin here to save you from a terrible explanation. So anything you tell the attributes folder to use LFS with is not committed to the same way as regular code. Instead, it's committed to a separate area and the repo just has a pointer to that file. And that way it's the same file throughout all commits. And if I have a logo, for example, and I change it from blue to green, I won't have two versions of the logo in the repo taking up space. It'll only just be the latest version of the logo in the large file storage and then a pointer to that logo. Anyway, that's how source control works. So we're going to get into a self-hosted solution as opposed to just, as I said, you can just make a GitHub account and then say uh, push once you set it up on, have you set it up on your IDE and then it will appear in your remote. So. Here's my repo online in the cloud, so this is why it's quite secure and you can see all the changes and access it like that. But getting into it on here, I'm going to set it up on this remote server. Uh, I'm simply remoted into my desktop in the other room there, so nothing too fancy like some headless Linux server or anything like that, it's just running Windows. And we're going to get into this. So first things first, again on this machine as well, you're going to want to install Windows, uh, sorry, install Git. So I get the 64-bit uh, git for Windows setup, and once that's finished downloading, I just install it like so. And just go through this. I'm just going to leave everything in the default locations and not mess with anything. Blah, blah, blah. Go through all of it. Just keep on going through it. Blah, 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 blah. There's a lot of stuff to mess with, and I'll come back once that's finished. Okay, once that's done, uh, I will launch git bash here. I think I can just do this from the terminal anyway, but I'll do it from git bash. Git lfs install. And that should, yeah, there you go. Now git lfs is initialized. That's all you need to do. You only need to do this once uh, per user, as it says. And now we're ready to go. So we're going to go to Gatia, and there's a download for Windows button on Projects Gatia. I was in the downloads page before, but I guess this just downloads it straight for Windows, even easier. So once it's downloaded, we're going to Press Control X to copy it into another folder. So I'm just going to put it in the local disks. Uh, go create a new folder. Gitty. Keep saying Gitty. I think it's just Gitty. I'm going to paste it in there, and I'll also get rid of the extension, and we'll run that. I'll let it through. And then go, we can see the port is running on there, 3000. So if I go open a new port and go localhost 3000, you can see now that it's, um, we're in this initial configuration page, but I want to uh, run it on, from my P, like main PC, this PC, not the server. So if I open new command prompt and go IP config, I'll be able to see my IPv4 address uh, here, the wireless LAN I'm using, and that'll give you your address, and then that it'll be that plus 3000. So if I minimize this, I go here, you'll see I'm now on my server, and here I can do the initial configuration. So I'll just go SQL Lite 3, and I'll leave everything the same, maybe set this up differently. And I'll leave all that a default from the name, uh, this is set up already since I've linked it through here, and if I just go install Git, it should work, I think. It's loading now. And then we are ready to go. We haven't made an account, so you have to register one. So I'm going to put my details here, just like put Armin. And after you create it, you are successfully into Git. Easy as anything. I'm going to make an organization as well, I think. So Armin does stuff, create organization, and now let's see if I can't make a new repo. All right, so I'm going to create the new repository under my company, and I forget what the project was called, backup test project. But there's also all this stuff as well, as I said, there's a git ignore, you can just get the Unity one from here, uh, licenses, etc. But we don't want to set any of this. Um, 
because this initializes it and we don't want to do that because we've already initialized it and this will not work uh, because you can't commit to a project where there's already commits uh, I think unless you do something like rebase and all this annoying weird complicated stuff so you just want an empty project basically so we're going to create repo there and you'll see that this is totally empty and we can just copy this and if we go into source tree I can say push and obviously this will be different depending on your remotes um, maybe I'll have to set up a remote first remotes add remote path there and I'll just say origin is the usual, na usual name origin uh, generic host um, I don't think I need this. Yeah, generic host should be fine. Let me test that. Uh, okay, I press OK. And then if I push that, push to main, push main to uh, remote, origin push. Let's see if that works. Get credentials manager, so I need to put my username and password in. It's the one that we just made. And let's see if this works. First time trying it, so time will tell. Who knows? And it worked! Sweet! Completely successfully. So, this now shows origin main and just regular main. So this is our local main and this is the main that's on origin. And if we refresh this, you'll now see, boom! We have our backup test project there. Just to show an example of a... Um, source control in action. So for example, if we'd open it up, go assets, uh, here's the scenes, we'll just say new, I was hoping to find a text file here, but whatever, we'll just say word document, test, and now we can uh, say, hey, test file, save, close. That was a bad example because I didn't know if these show differences. Uh, we can now see here that there's changes so we can just commit these and we say added test file and we can push immediately as well so we don't have to do the pr press push after and this will basically just add our changes so this is how source control works and it just keeps the latest version of our thing so now we have our main branch on here as well as our origin main so the remote and if we refresh this, we can see we've added the test file, that's the latest. All these were from the first commit, the latest change here was added test file. And we can see you've got test.docs yeah. here. So that's how you do basic source control. Um, but now on our own local server, which is running on our machine, this is our machine in the other room. And this way we don't have to deal with things like, you know, hitting our quotas and oh, you've got too much uh, file stored you have to buy like data packs that kind of stuff and we could just use this normally as our git repo so i hope this helps and those are the main two things you need to do or that i do as i said there are other ways like i think unity has its own version control but that's i think more with teams because you can like have three people working on a project at once once uh, which i don't really need because i'm more of a solo dev but yeah that's what i've got and i hope this helped do check out the streams, I'm making a new game called Abero and I'll probably try and do some actual like weekly devlogs summarising what I did in the previous week. Um, if you have any more requests or uh, any like questions about anything just let me know and I'll try and put out a video like this and hopefully help some people get into coding. So yeah, thanks for watching and have a great day.